Hello, welcome to Lawrence Hargrave School. Um, today I'm going to be talking to some of the teachers and the students about how we use interactive whiteboards in the classrooms. Now this school um, is for students that have a mild intellectual disability and a number of other um, behavioural issues. So what you'll be seeing will reflect some of that and we try to use technology in such a way to support their learning and their special learning needs. Okay, at Lawrence Hargrave we decided to purchase whiteboards for all classrooms at one time. The reason for this was twofold. Firstly, we decided that for teacher professional development it was important that all teachers had access to a whiteboard and that we could in incorporate all of our te technology into our teaching and learning programs. Um, the other thing is that technology is such a major focus at our school and so important for student engagement. We felt that all students needed equal access to the smart boards. We're now going to talk to Tusi, one of the students at Lawrence Hargrave, and he's going to uh, tell us a little bit about what he thinks about the interactive smart boards. Tusi, why don't you come in and have a seat? Yo! Yo! AKA Tusi me in the house, Mr. Dax, what's up, man? Great to see you, Tusi. Yeah. Now, uh, as you know, Tusi, today we're going to talk about the smart boards. Yep. Now, uh, I understand you've got one in your classroom. Yep. Now, what do you think of having a smart board? Uh, use it for all the students that are around you and make uh, projects or anything that you want. Now, I know that you used to have a blackboard in your room. Do you remember when you had a blackboard? Yeah, yeah. And it was just all chalk, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, so what's the difference between a smart board and a blackboard? What are some of the differences? A uh, blackboard, you use the chalk to draw on, but a smart board is like you you type something in or get some pictures off the internet and put it on there. What are you doing on the smart board okay, at the moment? So I'm doing mathematics, sir, and now you've got to read the question that says, drag the number to the bucket showing the nearest 10. Now, there's number 30, number 40, number 50, number 60, and this number, the main number, is 56. Now you drag it to 30, or 40, or 50, or 60. But I reckon it's mainly 60, because it's near, near the tens. Now, then you click Summit, and there's your answer. And press Next. There's another question. Drag the number to the bucket showing the nearest 10. Now, there's these numbers. Number, t number 10, number 20, number 30, number 40, number 50, number 60. Now you got to put it near to the number, the correct number. Now, I, the answer that I reckon, it goes near 50. Now that's, let's check. Now, that's your answer. Well, well my teacher likes actually, like, gives me some ideas like how to use the computer, learn a bit more, um, learn how to type, like like I said, put some pictures, tux paint, for example, uh, play some games, having fun, yeah. So it sounds like you're really enjoying having a smart board in your yeah, room. Yeah, really enjoying it. One more question to you before you finish. Yeah. Um, what about, does it make learning more interesting? Yep makes you learn when you want to be a psychologist, whatever you want. When you, once you grow up, you can get a better job by using a computer and a smart board. And teach, once you want to be a teacher, teach those other kids how to use a smart board. Awesome. Thank you very much, Tusi. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Yeah. I found since using the interactive smart board with the students, they've become more engaged in their lessons. They're willing to step up to the smart board and participate in the lesson, and we seem to be getting a lot more learning done in the classroom. The students often ask if we'll be using the smart board today and for what lessons we'll be using it with. What would it be, Dad? Skin. Skin, okay, so that one goes over to skin. The control centre of your body. So what tells your body what to do? Brain. Excellent. Move that one over. Form a supporting frame for the body. So what holds your body up so you don't fall down? Bones. Bones. 
What's the bones? At the top, bones, joints and muscles keep all together. Go next. So what do you like about having smart boards? Um, it's very um, exciting. Yeah. Uh, you can do lots of stuff on it. Uh, like look at web websites. Yeah. And do lots of technology stuff. And uh, you can write on it. Um, you can click it. You can click on anything, and you can write any write by itself. And he does lots of things. Yeah. And is learning more fun? Do you think learning is more fun? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, since we've had the smart boards in our classroom, um, I found that uh, the kids have been more engaged. Uh, the students really enjoy the fact that they can go up to the board um, and touch everything. It's very bright and colourful. A lot of our students um, are visual learners. And um, we found that the board really helps with meeting all the needs that that particular kind of learning requires. Uh, in our class, we really enjoy uh, doing mathletics and rainforest maths on the smart board. In what way do the smart boards make learning more interesting? Oh, it's easier and it's fun. Okay, so as you can see, um, one way that we're using it is by keeping a track of um, our experiments. Over here, we've got a stalagmite stalactite growth journal. And um, the really good thing about this is that we can actually use pictures along the way. That this is something that you would not normally be able to do if you're just doing pen and paper. Um, so we can have, we can observe visually, which is great for our visual learners, and we can actually do the writing to describe what's going on in each picture. And that way, we can just keep updating that as we go along and as the experiment progresses. And as you can see there, we've got um, an update over here, and we've got our pictures to go with the update. Okay, that's one way we can do it. Through our work on cultures, we've been able to access the internet straight away, and then we've been able to actually have a look at um, information on uh, different cultures. We've been at, you can download flags, you can download information. Kids have access to information um, on the spot, and it's stuff that you can share with the whole class rather than just one child at a computer and the teacher going around and wasting time, um, you know, directing each student. So you can direct all of the students all together, and this is just. Um, all the flags that we downloaded for um, for our flags chart. This is just something really simple. Um, over here we've got an experiment sheet and this is really great because you can actually go through all the steps in the experiment and you can do the experiment sheet together. So again, each child could have um, their own worksheet that they can actually um, work from and then you've got the uh, the master on the, on the whiteboard and you can go through and add information in. And then it doesn't matter if you run out of space because because it's a Word document, it automatically just, you know, gives you that space. Okay. Another way is by accessing artwork. So the kids um, can see it straight away. Okay. This came in really handy when we went to the art gallery because we had all the information right there. We could just get onto the computer, have a look at it, talk about it. So when we went to the art gallery, the kids had a really good idea of what they were doing before they even got there. This would usually take you going, you know, to the library, finding the books, finding the pictures. So it's time consuming and this is just so much easier. This is a proformer for the explanations text type and this is a really good way. This is basically, it's basically just like doing the chalk, chalk and talk, but using a computer. So we can actually go through and we can write our explanation. And the good thing about this is when you're going through and you're editing and you're modeling, um, you can just cut and paste, you can put pictures in, you can go back and edit, which is something that you can't do just with a, a chalkboard or a whiteboard because obviously it's very messy and this way it just makes it nice and neat and you can print straight off so the kids have a, uh, a document straight away. The most important thing is that teachers should not be afraid to use technology. Um, when you have a smart board in your room, explore it, find out what it can do because every time you go back and use it again you'll find that you pick up more skills and you find that it can do a lot more than you initially thought of. So be adventurous. What's it like to have smart boards in the room? It's good, it's better than using a chalkboard. 
Yeah, why is it better, do you think? Tell me why, why are smart boards better than chalkboards? Because you can do all sorts of stuff, you can go on the internet, you can play games, you can draw, you can do anything. Yeah, and what, um, how has it affected your learning? Because uh, usually I go and need mathematics, and it's better. I reckon it's way better. And does, that, does it help you with your learning? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. I've learnt much more since we had that board. In the cave. So, now that you... Cool, thanks, ma'am. Now that you're recording...